going to take a look at the Garmin Drive 50. I bought this model because it has lifetime map updates. A lot of the Garmin versions do now. And I got some type of bundle kit with all the accessories. Inside the main box is the actual device. And then some pieces to make your mount. Just snaps in. And there's two USB cables for charging. One's for the car, one's just for a regular adapter. I'm going to plug this into power, let it fully charge for a while. And the first thing I'm going to do is hook it up to my computer after it's charged to get all the updates. Okay, to install the software for my Garmin and update my maps, I'm going to go to garmin.com forward slash express. Download for Windows, because that's what I have. It's done, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch it. And I have my Garmin plugged into my laptop with the USB cable. It already has an update to the version I just downloaded. So first I installed the software and now I'm updating it. Now hopefully we're done. It found my device. I'm going to click on add. I'm just going to put in my email address. I'm going to leave the name Drive50 next. I'm going to say no to allow Garmin to collect my data. I've been prompted to install an update and we're going to do that. Agree to the terms. It may take a few hours. Do not unplug it. And you have to restart your device after the updates. And then map updates will begin afterwards automatically. So here we go. When prompted, unplug your device from the computer. Count to five and plug it back in. My device came back on, but if not, press the little round power button on the back to turn it on manually. Note at the top it says not connected, but we're just going to let it sit. It does say it may take a few minutes to reconnect. It took about 10 minutes and I finally heard the computer recognize the device. And now it's preparing for the map update. So if it just sits for a while, just let it sit. Now it's downloading map files. Note the warning at the top to leave your device plugged in. Copying files over. Now we're getting more software updates. And it's updating maps for the lower 49 states. So I'm going to click on install. Continue. And another restart. So remember, unplug. Count to five or double check that your device is fully powered off. And then plug back in. So I see a software loading message on the Garmin. So it just detected my Garmin. It only took a few minutes this time. Now it's connected and it's going to finish the updates. I click on install again. Once it's fully updated, when you launch Garmin Express and plug your Garmin in, it shouldn't take this long. And it says I am fully up to date. So now my Garmin has up-to-date software and up-to-date maps. Upon first booting it up, you select a locale. I'm going to leave it on the United States. I want American English. And it's just telling me what my current update is. Looks like it's good. Accept the end user agreement. I agree. Don't use it while driving. Some settings you can experiment with. Tap the gear icon. We've already done updates, maps and vehicles. You can change the type of car you want represented as you on your map. You can just select one and hit save. Driving map, I'm gonna leave it 3D, but you can make it so north is all the way up. I'm not sure what track up is, but you can experiment. Map detail, normal, more or less. Map theme, I'm gonna leave the Garmin. Scroll down. Map tools. Add tools to the map. 
There's shortcuts available for the map. Select tools to appear. So you can add a little stop button, change your route for easy access, volume. So you see some are already selected. You can put brightness on. That might be an interesting one. And I left the traffic conditions. That's a big one too. Map layers. Up ahead places and traffic. I'm just going to leave that. Available drive, driver alerts. Speed limit reduction. That's a good one to have. Schools. Very important. Auto zoom is enabled. I'm going to leave it enabled. My maps. It's already um, installed maps. Shows what maps I have installed. I have the 49 states and something called Foursquare. I'm not sure what that is. Navigation sets route preferences. Route preview shows a route preview when starting navigation. We absolutely want that. Calculation mode, I have it on fast. Sometimes you might not want the fastest. You might just want the shortest so you can change, change it there. Fatigue warning suggests breaks on long trips. Avoidances, so if you don't like U-turns or carpool lanes and so forth, you can avoid those. You can set up customs. Toll roads, always ask. That's a good setting. Restricted mode, features disabled while moving. You can, I'm an adult, so I'm going to turn that off. GPS simulator, GPS simulator for indoor use. I don't think I need that. Proximity alerts, alerts near proximity points. And then you can choose what type of alerts. Red light cameras, very interesting. So that's some cool settings. There's your display. Units and time, sets the current clock, I'm using 12 hour format, and so forth. So you can go through all these, and there's your basic device information. Categories, restaurants, and it has the last search, so I can just tap there again. And I can tap go, and navigate on road. you can zoom out or zoom in. So let's go ahead and take off. Down here is my arrival time. Here's some settings I can do. I can add, for example, I can add the volume up and down. It's pretty neat. Close it. Let's just take off. Now you see up at the top left, it says my next turn is a right turn. And it's in 0.3 miles. And it says box, the street I'm going to turn on to. I'm going right now, I'm stopped zero miles an hour. I'm on Beach Boulevard and I'm supposed to arrive at 620. Turn right on box, then take the first right. Turn right on Santa Isabel Boulevard. Arriving at Bay Peepers Bar and Grill on the left. So I'm here, and it will automatically end the, the route directions once you've arrived. It was avoiding a couple little tiny side streets, so I'm going to go to Settings, Navigation, I'm going to change the avoidance. I'm going to uncheck unpaved roads. Save it. Now I'm going to go back to the same route. Where to? Categories, restaurants. I'm going to say go. Please drive to highlighted route. Yes, now it should say turn right on Sanders. That's much faster. There we go. Turn Continue right Sanders. onto the unpaved road, then take the first right. And I don't, I don't know if I'd really call this an unpaved road, so that's a, like maybe that's subjective. It does have, it's very old road and very, very skinny road. Like you have to like almost get off the road if someone else comes the other way. Turn right on Santa Isabel Boulevard. So turning off avoid unpaved roads was very helpful. I would definitely do that setting. I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. Take a look and see what apps does. Backup camera, I guess this is things you can add. Where I've been. My little drive. Total distance, I've been one mile. It's just interesting stuff. It shows this nearby stuff. And help. Getting started, updating the maps, acquiring GPS. So. If you need assistance with certain topics, starting a route. So it's step by step if you get stuck somewhere. If you're totally done using the device, just hold 
and press that little round button in the back and turn it off. I hope this is helpful to get you started with the Garmin. Thank you.